So I've recently finished up a project or I'm finishing up a huge project where we're trying to bury power conduit and phone conduit for a new house build that we're gonna be starting here soon. All will be revealed as time goes by. But I had to dig a massive trench from the road all the way through out to our pump house out there. It's about a three foot deep trench. It goes right through here. I had to rebark this area because it was just bare and weeds were starting to come back up. You can see I tore up that tree a little bit with the excavator, but it's healing. In the meantime, I used to have a rhododendron. You can see it planted right here in this area amongst all these big fir trees. And it was beautiful. Uh, Royal Purple was the name of it. And it was beautiful rhododendron. I still have some babies from this in the hoop house, so I didn't lose it altogether. But I had to slide it over when I dug this trench and I was hoping that it would make it, but it was such a hot summer while I was digging all that out and doing the work, it ended up dying. So I'm gonna plant a new roadie here and I thought what would be better than a Loderi King George? It's gonna grow up massive and huge and just rain down huge flower buds, big blossoms in the spring and will create a beautiful area, just kind of an entrance to this little area. Maybe we'll have a bench or something over here at some point in the future. But uh, let's go get that rhododendron and get it planted. All right, so I've already had this rhododendron picked out. This is the Loderi King George. It's a beautiful blooming rhododendron that gets massive over time. It came from this little batch of rhododendrons that came from, oh, probably, I think I stuck those cuttings like three years ago, maybe, something like that. And there it is, finally ready to go. You can see I got a bare spot here. I'll show you what I just did with these out in the landscape, but... Uh, this is a Grandy Florum, one of my favorite old time rhododendrons that gets big, it's tried and true, and it grows beautiful over time. So let's get this out there and get started. Let's get this roadie over here and get planted. I don't want the tree roots as they get bigger to upset the apple cart here. I'm gonna start pulling this away a little bit. I'll have to rebark when I get all done. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do before on that and of course i dig down right where there's a big rock that's just the way it goes <laughs> up some of that root system so it doesn't just keep circling the wagons here. There we go. That will do just fine. I'm going to open this up a little more. This soil is not the best right now because I just dug that huge trench and upset all of it. But it'll recover. I think I'm gonna use some bark and soil mixed in here to give this guy a good start. there we go got it all planted up and yeah you can see I mixed in a little bit of fir bark with the soil as I went nothing's perfect about this 
bugs and worms and all those things over time will do the rest of it for me. And then I will come back. Obviously, there's no nutrients in this stuff. But uh, I will come back next spring, not right now, but next spring, and we're going to put down some fertilizer, the slow release, high nitrogen, rhododendron fertilizer all around this area. I'll probably actually spread some around this whole area around here just to help slowly start breaking down <laughs> the soil or this bark over time and also feed it through next summer. And over time, that soil will get better and better. So this is just, if any of you know, I mulch this so deeply because this rhododendron is like the creme de la creme of rhododendrons. It's an absolutely stately plant, absolutely beautiful. And in 20 years, we'll be up probably 15 foot tall and absolutely gorgeous and a nice addition to this area. Now, I'm gonna come get the rest of this mound right here that's kind of left over from all this. What do you think of that rock? I pulled that thing out of a spot right underground that we would always hit with the mower and it turned into something much bigger than I originally thought it would and I thought, oh, it looked good right there in the landscape. But uh, I did that when I was doing this whole electrical project. So anyway, I'm gonna get this mound right here of bark and kind of spread it over the rest of this, just cover all that rock and dirt and just make this little area look nice. I'll come back maybe in the next few days or so. I'm just gonna leave all this here and I'll come back and just just cut that whole rhododendron all that dead stuff off of there so you don't see it cover it all up it'll all just be barked real beautiful in i don't know another year or maybe next spring or something i'll come limb some of these branches up a little ways we've left them for now just because we wanted privacy from the road and the neighbors and all that kind of stuff but our hedge over here is really starting to grow up all these rhododendrons this one's probably five and a half foot tall now. They need water right now, but we've got a whole row of Anacruskis along here. So as those grow up more and more, these branches aren't gonna matter quite as much. So I'll start limbing things up a little bit. Got a little hydrangea in there, desperately needs water. So we came right through here with that electrical project. And uh, you can see I've been rebarking this whole area. I had to drive through and tear up a bunch of rhododendrons it was kind of sad but uh, it had to happen and there's the power pole we came from so I kind of tore some things up but got everything replanted rebarked this whole area and that's where I put those grandiflorum that I was showing you inside the hoop house I had five of them and I grabbed four of them planted them out here again to just reestablish this little hedge and that's what I've got going, same one, so it'll all match up over time. And they'll, they'll fill in over time. It'll take a while, but they'll get filled in eventually. And then I'm probably just going to get some straw out here and just straw this whole area real thick. That'll be the easiest way to do it because ultimately I don't care about this area over here. We're just going to let the trees grow up and fill that all in real well. This was kind of a bummer. For, do you guys see all that smoke out there? Isn't that crazy? We've had a lot of wildfires going on in uh, the Pacific Northwest lately, and everything is just so smoky. But it's also been a long, hot fall. It was, you know, it was a long, cold, rainy spring, and now it's a long, hot, dry fall. We haven't had any real appreciable rain in a while, but. Uh, Anyway, I was coming through here digging with that, that excavator and kind of hit some areas on this tree. So it's starting to heal up. You can see the cambium growing down in that bark and it's sealing off. It'll heal, it's kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. It'll seal off eventually. It was just a real tight area to get all that, to get that machine in and try to move around and dig, but we got it. We got it, it's done. Everything's gonna be covered back over. I'm hitting that mound behind me. Everything's gonna be covered back over and ultimately it'll all just kinda look nice again and start regrowing. We'll get some more grassy going down here and get everything back on track.
beautiful. I just love how all that bark looks when it's all spread out there nicely. We've got a beautiful new little rhododendron. I'll come back, fertilize it real good in the spring and it'll just start taking off. It'd be a few years before it's really nice and blooming well, but you know, we plant today for tomorrow, right? So that project's done. Now I got to move on through the rest of this here. These are the future plans. So I don't know what things are going to look like quite yet because we are going to be starting, actually we've already begun, a big house building project. We've been working towards this for a long time. By the way, if any of you want to see videos on that, I've kind of back and forth. Should we post videos, make videos about that? Would anybody care on this channel? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below. Anyway, I need to come back through this whole bed here the front side and just prune all of these roadies up on this side it's been years since i planted this bed they're starting to get to the point where they're getting established fairly well and i need to come through here i need to limb everything up prune everything up because i like these roadies growing up to create a nice privacy screen and i like tall blooming plants way up top here so we're gonna prune them all up, come back and bark under all these so that it looks real nice like this area over here. And then once I get all that done, I really need to come over to this bed and take care of that too. It's, we planted that bed about the same time and it just needs, it needs to be gone through and pruned up and rebarked and looking good again. There's a lot of my species rhododendrons back in that area and uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing how those develop over the years. And then a project I was going to start this summer, but just didn't get to, but is going to be an ultimate project. I will film it. I'm excited to get all this done. This is kind of the corner of the property and you can see where the cars come along the road here. And we want to just block out this whole corner just to make it a serene private garden once again. So for years behind this backhoe here, I had a uh, landscape guy, or actually not a landscape guy, a tree guy uh, He you know, that limbs trees and he grinds up all the wood chips. He was dumping piles of wood chips. There's probably 20 loads of wood chips in there. You can see all throughout here that have composted and flattened over time. This was years ago he was dumping this stuff here. So it's good, you know, turn into good soil now. I'm going to come through here and I'm going to limb these trees up limb them all up so light can get down in here better limb all these up get all this ugly stuff out of here we're going to keep that beautiful maple i'm going to spread all those wood chips over this whole area plant a bunch of fir trees in the back and then a bunch of roadies all along the front and i've already got picked out which roadies i want to plant at least for the most part and then we're going to continue on up the side of the property here all right well there's one little piece of my day check that out beautiful Little hydrangea bloom. That was that actual hydrangea that we grew indoors all winter last winter. We got a bunch of videos back in the archives about that one. It made it bounce back doing good. We'll have to figure out the fertilizer issue on those next year. Iron or, you know, nitrogen combination. See what happens. But before we close out here, I thought I would just show you guys real quick these figs. <laughs> so... I've been watching these things patiently. I thought in the hoop house, there's a little extra heat, not too much, but you know, it just kind of kind of extends things out a little bit. It's not heated, the ends are always open, but it just kind of helps out a little. I got all these big figs that I was really hoping to see something on. That's a, a uh, in fact, this particular tree right here, that is uh, the, what the heck is that? <laughs> That's the uh, MB, MB, I'll think of it in a second. But that's that fig right there is from, that, that very cutting is one of the two that I grew in that fig video where I got all the massive roots and a 100% success rate. That's one of them right there. I've just kept it in that two gallon pot all that time so it hasn't gotten that big. But you can see those figs, man, they're, they're trying real hard. It grew a bunch of them, they're just not, they're just not ripening. It really needs an earlier start because like I said, this is unheated and so Maltese beauty. There we go. I knew it'd come to me eventually. And then I was hoping for some of these BNRs to ripen, but they're not even big enough. We got a whole bunch of them forming up in there. Beautiful fig. I really need a greenhouse around here, but there's where it's at. We got uh, Galicia Negra over here. Big leaves. I love this thing. Look how massive 
Look at how massive those leaves are. I love that tree. It's just, it's so vigorous. No figs at all yet. Tons of figs on everything else though. Tons of figs. Look at this one. We got this uh, Regato del Salento PB. I got this one from Dan last year and it is just growing vigorously with lots of figs, but nothing ripening yet. And then I was very hopeful on this St. Martin because it's supposed to be an earlier fig and it got lots of them, nothing ripening. I need a greenhouse, guys. I really need a heated greenhouse. This one actually surprises me every year. It, it seems like it, where is it? it wants to die back to the ground, it feels like, and then it just bounces back. Let's see, there it is. Ischia black, I've had this for years. This one right here. It's Ischia black and, or Ischia, however you say it. It's got some nice growth, got two nice branches on it, but it's a smaller one, it's slower growing. I've had it for probably like four years now. And there it is, that's all it's ever done. Of course, it's just in a little three gallon pot, but uh, I don't know if I dare plant that out on the property. I don't know if it'll make it or not. Who knows, another cool one, Martin Inca Ramada. Big fat leaves. Excited about these figs next year. Hopefully as they're in the ground longer, they just do better and better. But next season we got coming is rhododendrons. We're heading into winter here soon and everything will be asleep. And then when we wake up, we've got massive amounts of blooms. I'm looking forward to that, guys and gals. I hope you guys join me. Of course, I'll be here all winter. But things are going to be shutting down here soon for plant growth. All right. See you guys in the next video. Adios.